Hi, welcome to the first quarter 2021 investment update for the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley region. I'm Alan Lenahan, CIO of FEG. Hi, I'm Catherine Maurer. I am co-OCIO advisor. We're going to start with an update of markets thus far in 2021 and a look back to the exciting year we've just experienced. This slide presents data for the one year, the fiscal year to date period, and the first quarter of 2021. Broad market data is presented here with the one year represented by the orange bar. This was an exceptional one year period for markets. If you look at the far left of this chart, you can see global equity markets over the trailing 12 months, the last one year were up over 50%. 54.6% to be precise for the MSCI All Country World Index. If you look further to the right, you'll see that bonds had a difficult period of time while real assets performed fairly well and again, exceptionally well for the history for a one year period. And then a hedge fund index represented by the HFRX sits somewhere in between equities and fixed income. This truly is an exceptional period and as you recall, the first quarter of 2020 has now dropped off this data. If you look further to the right, you can see some of the underlying trends that markets presented during the last year and quarter. Uh, in short, the US markets were exceptional, but actually emerging market equities were even more exceptional. And on the one year period, growth stocks outperformed value stocks, but value staged a dramatic comeback in the fourth quarter of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021. In the last year, we experienced exceptional market returns from equities and from real assets. If you think back to the first quarter of 2020, we had a very difficult market environment with equity markets down in the range of 30%. While the rebound was swift and severe, this presented an opportunity to think long-term and stay invested, which we did in the portfolio. Over this time frame, fixed income is roughly flat. Risk assets buoyed markets and buoyed the portfolio. So in bullish environments where riskier assets outperform, we expect the portfolios with the highest level of equities to perform better than the lower risk portfolios. And that's exactly what happened for the Community Foundation's portfolios across all three time periods we are about to share here. This outperformance is especially pronounced at the one year mark with the endowment delivering returns of 43%, the long-term portfolio just slightly behind that at 39%, the intermediate term portfolio at 20%, and the short term at negative uh, 1%. I'd like to take a little bit more time here to look at both uh, the endowment in a little more depth and the short term portfolio. Starting with the endowment, in addition to the strong absolute returns for the one year mark, we also saw exceptionally strong relative returns with the portfolio outperforming the benchmark by 470 basis points. The prevailing theme driving this relative outperformance was the strength of the active managers. And they're just highlighting the fixed income category, which is entirely comprised of active managers. The return for the year was 9.3% versus the benchmark's return of 0.7%. And while I would love to say that outpacing the benchmark by 860 basis points is something we can provide moving forward, we have to acknowledge that this has been an exceptional time with returns at levels we're unlikely to see often again in this lifetime. But we do hope that this conveys confidence to you and our ability to select quality asset managers. And we will continue seeking out talent to include in the portfolio uh, for your behalf. You know, switching to the short-term portfolio, I imagine several of you are wondering what happened, why are returns negative, especially when they are so strong for all the other portfolios. In mid-October, Johnson Bank restructured this portfolio to take on additional interest rate risk while maintaining a high level of credit quality. The intent was to seek additional return for investors in an environment of near zero deposit rates. The, the portfolio is expected to gross total return, which is interest and price movement, between negative 1.3% and 4.5% annually. But the recent rapid and dramatic move in interest rates resulted in performance on the lower end of the range. And you can see that in the chart here. And this is because the interest rates are inversely related to price. So when the rates go up, the price goes down. Over time, the expectation is that interest will offset the price decline. And as bonds are reinvested, the interest earned will also increase. So I, I think that the, we're asking you to, to bear with us as the environment requires a bit of patience within fixed income right now. 
Let's take a look at how the portfolio is currently positioned. As you can see from this slide, we are currently positioning the portfolio marginally overweight global equity, a little bit underweight fixed income, and also a little bit underweight real assets. Our view is that the current environment remains positive for equities, especially relative to fixed income. Yes, valuations have gotten a little bit stretched at this point, but with the reopening of the economy and positive earnings results we've seen from corporations thus far, we believe equities can grow into their valuation and we remain positive. Fixed income, as Catherine just detailed, is challenged in this extremely low rate environment, especially seeing some potential for inflation, which could further increase underlying interest rates and make a difficult environment for fixed income. Real assets, we believe, are secularly or long-term challenged, especially within the commodity and energy spectrum. So therefore, a marginal underweight there. With that positioning in mind, let's take a look at an underlying holding in the portfolio and an adjustment we made in the first quarter. RWC is an emerging markets manager. As you recall, emerging markets have been the strongest performing geography across equity markets, and RWC has participated and outperformed the emerging market index by approximately 30 percentage points over the course of the last year. We added RWC, as you can see from the chart at the bottom of this slide, to the portfolio in March of 2020 coming off a very difficult period, not just for them, but of course, global equity markets as well. After their significant run, we renegotiated our fee structure with RWC. Initially, we were in their mutual fund paying 1.3%. As of February, 2021, we moved to a 0.35% fixed fee and a 15% performance fee. So you've heard of buy low and sell high. Well, the approach we took was buy low and negotiate high. After a significant performance run like this, we reduced our fixed fee with the manager and now have further incentivized them to continue this type of performance by having a performance fee in our arrangement, but to paying them a much lower fixed fee. We leveraged our scale and resources at FEG to negotiate a manager arrangement like this, and we're excited to bring that to the Community Foundation. And that's our first quarter review. Thank you all for joining us virtually today. We look forward to doing this again next quarter, but in the meantime, we are posting regularly to The Loop, so please check us out there.